Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So it's season 15, and this is the last war of the season, war number 12. And we're going up against an alliance called Above the Fallen. So you can see the team that I've gone in here with. This seems to be a good team now. I've added Omega Red, took out Blade, and the rest of the team remains the same. I still love my Gladiator Hulk for this first path. As you noticed, they did not place a defender on that first node, so I only had one fight to fight in this section, on this path. And Gladiator Hulk is still a beast for this path. He has defeated all comers. What makes Gladiator Hulk so good, in case you are not aware, this path is a starburst path. So you take a passive degen. Well, you'll notice to the left, face me, that is Hulk's ability. When face me is active, Hulk is going to heal up most of the damage he takes while face me is active. And he's going to do a lot more damage than he normally does. So ideally, you want face me active with Gladiator Hulk. Without face me, he's okay. But what makes him a beast is that face me. On path one with Starburst, that activates his face me. So what you see here is Hulk at his best. Down goes Emma Frost. Gladiator Hulk, face me, beast mode. All right, so far we haven't found anybody that can take him out. I've had some difficult fights, but that's more because of my fighting skills than for Gladiator Hulk. All right, so because I bring in Omega Red, I'm always ready to take this first boss. Before that, I never took this first boss, but we have someone that takes the Psychic Thorns path, so they already bring a counter for that node. And what ends up happening most of the time is they just go ahead and take that first mini. So now we're in the second section, and again, they did not place a defender in that first node there. So again, I only had to fight one opponent in this next section, uh, at least to clear my path. Now, anytime I see this uh, yellow jacket, I always want to bring in Starkey. He is great for fighting Yellow Jacket. He was one of my early counters to him. I don't know if you guys remember, but in AQ, there used to be a Yellow Jacket off to the left, upper left hand uh, side, and he was annoying. He had a, a unblockable special one, and he used to wreck people. Well, I would sometimes bring in OG Daredevil, but he was only ranked four. When I got uh, Starkey as a four star, that's who I started using all the time if I needed to go over on that side. All right, so once again, they cleared that node and the next one. So now we've just got a few left. Folks are beasting it up. And I asked, I said, okay, well, I have Omega Red, you know, I've got almost full health on all my guys. And Omega Red, I think, is a great counter for this man thing. So I asked, and they said, yeah, you're probably our best bet. Because I wanted to make sure no one else um, had a better option. Uh, Gladiator Hulk could also fight this man thing. Basically, with man thing, Ideally, you want someone who is poison immune because if you don't have someone that's poison immune, Man-Thing might prove to be a little problematic. Uh, I have gotten wrecked by Man-Thing when I went up against him, I think with Starkey, and I forget who else I tried that was not really poison immune, but some don't remember or don't realize that Omega Red is poison immune. You know, we kind of get into that thinking that if they're green, then they're poison immune. You know, Man-Thing, uh, Hulks. 
And uh, we just forget that there are other champions in the game that are poison immune that are not green. So you might want to bear that in mind when you are thinking about who you want to take up against this man thing. All right, now, as you notice, my Omega Red is a six star and he is ranked two and he's unawakened. Now, because I'm running suicides, this does not bother me at all. I love my Omega Red, even though he is unawakened. If I ever get the six star awakened though, it just ramps him up all the more. So notice that my Omega Red is at full health and that man thing is going down. Look, he's less than half health at this point. All right. And I made a little mistake. I glanced up um, and you'll see that in a little bit here because look at this. We're wrecking him. OK, that special two, very easy to evade. I'm trying to stay close to him so that I can get those spores on him. And he's doing everything he can to, you know, keep me away from him. And so I'm like, yeah, I got this. And then I did that. I wasn't paying attention and got clipped. You know, he caught me going backwards, but I paid him back and got him when he was dashing backwards as well, just like he did me. So I'm doing good here and I'm boosted. Now I had asked them and it sounded like they were ready. So I told them, I said, someone else needs to take this Nick Fury and then I will take that Doom up there on the debuff immune. I remember uh, one of the wars that we lost, I felt bad because I could have taken that Doom. Uh, so could the guy who did it. He just messed up in the end. 1% was what Doom was left with. Um, but in any case, in this war, they went ahead and cleared both of those. So let's find out how we did. And we're back. And as you can see, we won the war. So we ended the season on a winning note. But according to the calculations of a couple of Alliance members, we were going to get goal one, whether we won or lost this final war. And we did end up getting gold one. And I noticed something that I had not seen before. I was looking for the defense tactics and I couldn't find them. And I've always seen them. That's because we dropped a tier. We dropped a tier and we are currently in tier six, as you can see down there at the bottom left. And there are no defense tactics for tier six and uh, below, I believe. So these wars, while we were in tier six anyway, were a little easier than we were used to. Now, for next season, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, to give you a little bit of background of what's going on in the Alliance, we had a group leave as a group. It was a calculated move. I'm sure they would deny it, but it seems obvious to everyone else. And they all left together. And we got our alliance leader back. So he is going to be rebuilding. He is, in fact, rebuilding uh, the alliance. He was away for a little bit, had some personal things to take care of. He was working like over 60 hours a week. He just didn't have the time uh, to put into the alliance. Well, he's back. And he is going to make our alliance great again. So I look forward to better wars, better results, uh, faster movement in AQ. Uh, we still remain top 30, but we have the ability to get top 20. I think we were pretty close to getting top 20, but... Top 30 is fine with me. Great rewards at top 30. And currently, at the time of this recording, he was recruiting. He got a few people in. But then, I think, two more 
left, decided to leave and join another alliance. And I don't blame them. Not everyone likes to be an alliance that's going to be rebuilding, that's going through some things. And so they would prefer to go to an alliance where things are already stable, established, uh, or they may not be able to play at this high level anymore. We have at least uh, one or two that went to an alliance that uh, did map five or six instead of map seven all the time because those donations are problematic. And if they're not going to run arena like I run arena, then they're not going to be able to make the donations. So that is where we stand right now. And I will see you guys next season. Hopefully it'll be a better season. And we will aim, I believe, for platinum. Not necessarily high platinum, but platinum four. Three or four would be perfect. And top 30 in AQ. So that's going to do it, guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And you all have a blessed day.